The first Top Gun was such a huge hit that it may surprise you to learn that Tom Cruise was reluctant to accept the role, and in fact had one big condition for signing onto the project. He wanted to fly a plane. Cruz went from being landlocked to getting his own pilot's license. When it came time to get back into the pilot seat for Top Gun Maverick, you know Cruz could not wait to get back up into the sky. But there was one minor detail that had to be sorted out, and that was getting special Navy clearance for one of the stunts. It turns out, the Navy is not crazy about people launching from their carriers, even if that person is a really famous celebrity. According to Maverick director Joseph Kaczynski, special clearance was needed for crews to take off and zoom over the desert at an insanely low altitude. He claims it was one of the most extreme sequences that he could come up with, and over the course of the film, Tom got to fulfill every kind of aviation dream he ever had. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai is the tallest building in the world, reaching an incredible 2,722 feet into the sky. Needless to say, it's a long drop to the ground, but that wasn't enough to deter Tom Cruise from scaling the side of it in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. The stakes were so high that even Ghost Protocol director Brad Bird admitted that he was terrified at the prospect of dangling one of his stars over a thousand feet high, but there were safety measures taken even if fans couldn't see them. Cruise was rigged up to cables that were later erased during the post-production process. According to the stunt coordinator, it took over 200 hours of research and development to figure out how to pull off this stunt, which included a four-story freefall. Not only was the glass incredibly hot, but the wind that high was intense. All the dialogue had to be added in later since it was impossible to pick up the sound over the wind. Tom Cruise is fearless when it comes to flying, even if he's not actually in the plane when it takes off. In Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, Cruise grabs hold of an Airbus 400 and clings onto it for dear life quite literally. Yes, that's a real plane, with a real movie star holding onto it. The director of photography Robert Elswit said the plane took off at 100 knots, went up 1,000 feet in the air, which meant going back down was a process. Cruz was wearing a full body harness which was wired to the plane. He also had to wear special contacts designed to protect his eyes from any possible debris. As if the plane didn't generate enough wind, there was also a helicopter flying alongside it to capture Cruz's feet from another angle. The stunt was so extreme that even Cruz admitted that he was terrified, although that didn't stop him from doing it. Fans love that Tom Cruise always goes the extra mile, whether that takes him thousands of feet into the sky or in an underwater vault like we saw in Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Usually, underwater scenes have stars holding their breath for about 15 seconds, but not in this case. This set was covered in 20 feet of water, and that's really Tom Cruise, and not a stunt double the entire time. Not only did he have to hold his breath the entire time, but he also had to keep acting, including pretending that something had gone wrong. In fact, stunt coordinator Wade Eastwood admitted to pulling Cruz out of the water prematurely a few times because his fake unconsciousness was really convincing. Ready to hear how far past the 15 second Mark Cruz had to push himself for this scene? He trained to be able to hold his breath for over six minutes. According to Eastwood, another danger was that the techniques Cruz utilized combined with being underwater were actually quite soothing. He worried that Cruz would forget what he was doing and push himself too far past the brink. Wade Eastwood also worked with Cruz on the film Mission Impossible Fallout, and this time they decided to enjoy a leisurely helicopter ride in beautiful New Zealand. But the problem was that their hectic schedules interfered with this plan, so they just decided to write a helicopter scene into the movie instead. Of course, this meant that Tom Cruise had to learn how to fly one first, but that barely slowed him down. And he didn't just go through basic training, he had to learn how to do 360 downward spirals while acting and while coordinating with the other camera carrying helicopters. I trained for a year and a half to fly the helicopter. Thankfully, Cruz was able to pull off this insane stunt without a hitch, but he did sustain an injury on the set of Fallout. After learning how to pilot a helicopter and taking place in an aerial sequence, Tom Cruise then broke his ankle jumping between two buildings. At least the incident occurred during a relatively minor stunt. When Cruz made Mission Impossible Fallout, he also made history by becoming the first actor to do a halo jump on camera. A halo jump is high altitude, low open. He made his leap from 25,000 
thousand feet off the ground and landing safely wasn't his only concern. One major worry for the stunt people was the threat of hypoxia, since Cruz was operating in a low oxygen condition. He could have easily forgotten how to pull off the stunt at the worst possible time while filming the scene. You start losing your mind, but you don't realize it. Cruz trained in a vertical wind tunnel to get ready, but the fact that the scene takes place at sunset was an added complication. He could only make one jump per day due to the strict time frame, which meant this was far from a one and done scene. During Mission Impossible 2, we saw Cruz scale a massive cliff using just two hands. He decided against using safety nets, and instead bet his safety on a thin safety cable. Director John Woo tried his best to convince Cruz to use a stunt double, but the star absolutely would not hear of it. Even Paramount Pictures suggested that it might not be the best idea, but Cruz thought that it was the perfect way to reintroduce Ethan Hunt after the first film. Not only was the scene treacherous, but it was incredibly hot in Moab, Utah, and it took seven excruciating takes to get it right. Cruz may have gotten the scene he wanted, but it cost him. He ended up pulling a muscle in his shoulder, which in the grand scheme of things, feels like he got off pretty easy, considering what a dangerous situation he was in. In an industry with an increasing reliance on CGI, it's actually really refreshing that Tom Cruise is so dedicated to making practical effects happen, and he's understandably reluctant to pass his tasks on to a stunt double, since it would deprive the audience of seeing his handsome face, and he's just not that cruel. However, he put his movie star good looks at risk during the movie Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Not only did he perform some incredible motorcycle moves, but he did so without wearing a helmet. Just remember not to try this at home. They used top-of-the-line bikes in Rogue Nation, with the stunt coordinator describing them as fighter jets on wheels. Of course, these bikes came with top-of-the-line safety features, which were promptly disabled so they could take part in moves like drifting, which are not exactly encouraged by the safety manual. Back in 1996, audiences had not yet learned that no mission is truly impossible for Ethan Hunt. Let's take a look back at the original Mission Impossible, before Tom Cruise became a helicopter-flying underwater expert who scaled the world's highest building. Back then, his biggest problem was figuring out how to move around while suspended by wires during the now-famous heist scene. Like most scenes that look pretty straightforward, this one was really tricky. It takes a lot of core strength to be able to move around like that, and even Cruz wasn't perfect. Apparently, he smacked his head against the ground more than once, and supposedly, he resorted to putting coins in his shoes to help him balance while he held his body parallel to the ground. It may not be the most glamorous look, but you can't argue with results. When filming The Last Samurai, Tom Cruise learned that filming scenes on horseback can be incredibly dangerous, even when the horse is just a mechanical one. Like all of his other movies, Cruise insisted on doing his own stunts, which meant that he had to go through a lot of training in order to get ready. He had to learn how to fight with the sword both on the ground and on horseback. During one scene, he and his co-star Hiroyuki Sonata were sword fighting on horseback. But don't worry, animal lovers, they were not riding real horses. While this was safer for the equines involved in production, it was very nearly disastrous for Cruz. Sonata's mechanical mount was supposed to just stop before he would have brought his sword down on Cruz's head. Only it didn't. It kept going, and only Sonata's martial arts experience and incredible reaction time prevented a behind-the-scenes tragedy. Although this fight scene was particularly harrowing, Cruz claims that there were a ton of things that could have gone wrong in the battle sequences. When he defended himself against numerous opponents, he had to deal with over 70 points of contact, and one wrong move could have meant losing an eye, or worse. 